has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who may believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know you shall be remembered for favor i say you shall be remembered for the favor Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the family month. And um, I'm expecting our hallelujah to be more than what we are giving to me. Praise ye the Lord. That is better. That is better. I want to thank God for the privilege to stand at this exalted pulpit to share the word of God with us today. I want to appreciate the committee that suggested my name to the powers that be and we thank the powers that be who graciously approved the recommendation of my name to be this morning so I want to appreciate the angel of the church Reverend Mrs. and Reverend Dr. Babatunde Ido for the honor to share your pulpit with the people of God this morning. Praise the Lord. As the family month, I'm supposed to be here with my family. That is the expectation. But uh, I couldn't be here with my family. The family now is just me, my wife, and uh, one of our daughters. Incidentally, a church had invited us to come to minister coming Sunday, also family month. And um, after we had accepted invitation and also accepted this invitation, that church changed the program to this Sunday. Next Sunday is Children's Sunday. And so we are just okay. Because we have accepted to be in the two places, I should be here while my wife and my daughter should be there. So that's why they are not here. Please forgive me uh, for their absence. Hallelujah. 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 Please don't let us do my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes. Because that's what dangerous people. But let, don't let us do that this morning. Let's, let's be alive. Let's be alive. Let's be alive. Amen. Please love to hold hallelujah from God until you wind them. 
Don't wait to be wound before you give God what he demands from you. Amen. Amen, O. Oh. Our text this morning is Psalm 128. Psalm 128 from verse 1 to verse 6. And uh, it has the text for the family month. And the topic for the day is the blessed family. And that topic is not taken from one of the verses in that chapter, but taken from the whole chapter, which means one has to consider the whole chapter as you look at the blessed family. And so let's take our Bibles and read from Psalm 128, verse 1 to verse 6. We'll pray, and then I'll share quickly what the Lord has for us. I don't have an idea of what many minutes I have. Reverend IWC, how many minutes? 45. From now? Or from when I started? <laughs> Psalm 108. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. And it says, How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways, when you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy, and it will be well with you. Amen. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. Your children like olive plants around your table. For those shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. Thank you for the privilege you have given to us to gather together to celebrate you in all that you have done and in all that you are to us. We are grateful unto you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here. You condescended to be among humans. Lord, it is awesome and it is awful. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for your presence. And thank you for what you've been doing, even in the worship. And thank you for what you are going to do now as your word proceeds. The entrance of your word brings light and life to the hearers. Lord, let that scripture be fulfilled this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Do that which no man can do. Do that which only you can do. Let all the glory be yours, O Father. And let the blessings be ours. Thank you for hearing, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Psalm 128 is one of the most used psalms, especially among the Pentecostals. Right from the time I grew up as a Christian, I observed that Psalm 127 and 128 are the chapters of the psalm that are normally used for giving names to children. You go a naming ceremony, go off the phone read, Psalm 127, Psalm 128. And so it's a familiar psalm to most of us. 
But the, 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 the work we have this morning is looking at that psalm and addressing the blessed family. The blessed family. The picture the psalmist paints here is not that much of the family, but of the man. From verse 1 to verse 6 focuses on the man, not the, not, not the family. Although there are interjections about the wife and the children. But the, the focus is on the man. And our focus will be on the man. Because that's the focus of the, of the, the scripture we are using. Focus will be on the man and then when time comes, we bring in those that are brought in, like the wife and the children. Praise the Lord. By doing that, we'll be doing justice to the text. The psalm is one of the psalms, one of the songs that is sung while ascending on pilgrimage to the place of worship by the Jews. So it's a song. Like the family came to sing from Psalm 128 some minutes ago. The psalm considers the man, the place of the man, the man head, the man head, not just the man, the man who is head of the family, the place of the man head of the family among the rest members of the family before God, before God. Because the focus is on the man, if I were to write this psalm, I would not say, blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, as the translators have said it. Rather, I would say, blessed are you, O man, who fears the Lord. And if you, if you look at what I've just said, and the rest verses of the chapter, it blends. When you say, blessed is everyone, can mean man, can mean woman, can mean children, can bring anybody. But because the focus is not on everybody, but on the man, therefore one can, one can conveniently say, blessed are you, O man, who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. And that's just telling us that the focus of the chapter is on the man. What do we mean by a family? I know the family is the product of marriage. A marriage is ordained and ordered by God for everyone except those that have the gift of celibacy. Marriage is ordained and ordered by God. The product of marriage is the family. The family, therefore, is the husband and the wife and the fruit of that union, children. Now, if there are children, it is a family. If there are no children, it's still a family. The husband and wife remain a family until children come. Hallelujah. So the family can be the husband and wife waiting until the children come. But what can we say is the definition of a family? There are many definitions, but I'm clinging to one. And that definition says the family is the group of persons who form a household under one head including the parents, the children, other relatives, and servants, as the case may be. I take it again. The group of persons who form a household under one head, 
including parents, children, other relatives like cousins, like uncles, like aunties, nieces and nephews, and servants. In a household under one head, and that is very, very important. Now, that is what I have adopted as a definition for the family. And so the psalm, the psalm, and the psalmist remind us that the place of a godly head of an or establishment is very, very important. The place of the head of the household or any institution or establishment is very, very important. When God, when God is in favor, in favor with the king of a nation, God is in favor with the nation. When God is in favor with the, nation, with the king, things go well for that nation. When God is in favor with the pastor of a local church, things go well for, that, for the members of the local church. Are you following me? Now, in the same way, when things, when God is in favor with the head of the household, the head of the home, things will go well with the household. Now, that is why, even though the psalmist and the psalm is focusing on the man, the understanding is that when things are well for the man, things are well. And so that is the angle from where we are coming to look at this psalm and use it to address our topic, the blessed family. The man is very, very important in the sight of God. Very, very important. Very, very important. Like I said, he is the one who stands to represent the family in the sight of God. He is God's access to the family. He is the one that God holds responsible for the family. In fact, the, the, the godly man head of the family occupies a very important position. For example, in the whole of scripture, very few people have combined the the offices of the prophet, the priest, and the king at the same time. We only know of David who occupied that position in the Old Testament. And after David, the only one again who occupied that position of a prophet, priest, and king is the Lord Jesus. Not even Melchizedek. Melchizedek was, was a priest of the Most High and the king of Salem. Not even Jeremiah who was a priest and then a prophet. He wasn't a king. Not even Daniel. Not even Ezekiel, who was also a priest, a prophet, and not a king. So, only David had occupied that position as a prophet, a priest, and a king. Then he, he occupied the position as a type of Jesus, who was yet to come. And Jesus came. And after Jesus manifested himself as a prophet, priest, and king, the only one who would share position now is the godly manhead of the home. The husband of the house is a prophet. The husband of the house is a priest. The husband of the house is a king in his household. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So men, see yourself as God has positioned you. You are occupying a position that nobody has occupied apart from David and Jesus Christ. That's very, that's very instructive and that's very challenging. Don't joke with that position. Never you joke with the position. The position of the man head. Don't toy with it. Don't play with it. Don't joke with it. God is serious about it. Praise the Lord. Can the men praise the Lord? Well, I will tell the women to praise the Lord. If they praise the Lord more than you, maybe they will occupy your position. Can the men praise the Lord? Okay. Can the women praise the Lord? 
Now, the, the women's answer is louder because you are jealous. Amen. 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 The prophet, the priest, and the king. What a position. What a position. What a position. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty, who has made you the man head of the home, as a prophet, priest, and king, will not find you failing in that responsibility in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a, a proper prophet to your family. You will be a proper fish priest to your family. And you will be a proper king to your family. Don't forget I've said when things, when God favors the king, he favors the nation. If God favors you as the king of that family, that family will be favored. If God favors you as a man head, that family will be favored. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the, the, the psalmist picks two things. Two things which we want to elaborate very quickly before he talked about the blessed family. Number one, he said, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. The man in this exalted position, the prophet, the priest, king, should not fear man. Because the fear of man is a snare, it's a trap. Bible says the fear of a king is like a roaring lion. And there was the fear of the king is like terror. But the fear of God brings abundance of blessings to the one who so the psalmist says blessed is the man who fears the Lord blessedness there means fortunate happy joyful name another word you want to use but the man is happy the man is fortunate the man is joyful the man is glad when he fears the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? Some have misunderstood what the fear of the Lord is. And when something is misunderstood, there is every possibility of misuse or abuse. What is the fear of the Lord? Now, the fear of the Lord is the deep-seated reverence, respect, honor, delight in, and love for God, the Almighty, your maker, that makes the one fearing him to put God first in everything. In every situation, in every decision in life, God is placed first. That is a man who fears God. So the fear of God is that deep-seated reverence, honor, respect, delight in, and love for God that makes a man to put God in the number one position in all things, in all situations, in all decisions. So if you are making a decision and uh, you don't, if you, if you are making five decisions and uh, you put God first in four and you, put, you don't put him first in another one, you are failing in the fear of God. The fear of God makes you to make him number one in everything, in everything. And I, I can't overemphasize the everything. But I know we are human. And as a man, I know that the tendency is there to consider other things when you are facing life situations and when you are making life decisions. But the one who fears God is the one who puts God as number one in everything, in every situation, in every decision. 
Hallelujah. Now that is a man who fears the Lord. And the Bible says that such a man will experience some things. For example, the man who fears the Lord, who puts him first in everything, he will hate evil. He will hate evil and depart from evil. According to Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. That man would be a wise person who puts God first in everything he does. He will be a wise person. The wisdom of God will be upon him. The Bible says God reserves sound wisdom for his own. He reserves it for the man who fears the Lord. Divine wisdom. Not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom of God. The wisdom that Jesus operated in will be the portion of the man who fears the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. The wisdom of God. The man who fears the Lord has the presence of God because the fear of the Lord attracts God's presence. The Bible says God will be with the one who fears him. And so God's presence is always with the one, that man who fears the Lord. As he fears the Lord and the presence of the Lord is with him, the presence avails the man salvation, deliverance, safety, wherever you go. Now that is the kind of person who fears the Lord. And that is the kind of blessing that the person who fears the Lord will continually receive. The Bible says that the, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Fountain of life. We all know what a fountain is. A place where water gushes out constantly. Constantly. The fountain of life talks about quantitative life and qualitative life. Quantitative because it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. That is quantitative. And qualitative because, because the flow is constant, the water remains fresh. Fresh always. And so we're talking about a man who experiences life in quantity and life in quality. How does it come? By the fear of the Lord. By the fear of the Lord. The Bible also says that this man who fears the Lord is a kind of person from whom praises urge out like a fountain to God. Of praise. He's full of praise. He's full of praise. When things are seemingly going bad, he praises God. When things are seemingly going well, he praises God. When he considers things to be going well, he praises God. When it seems to him that things are not going well, he still praises God. For he knows that when things are not going well, the only thing that can make them go well is God. So he goes to God in praise. Therefore, the man who fears the Lord is always in touch with God in quality praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray today that the Lord will make you a man that fears the Lord. Again, I hear the voice of the woman more than that of the man. I pray that God will make you a man that fears the Lord. And your fear of God will be deep-seated. Something that is constant. Something that cannot be shaken. Something that is unshakable. That's, that's the kind of fear God will give to you as you listen to me in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. But secondly, he says, the man who fears the Lord also walks in the ways of the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and walks 
in his ways. Walking in the way of God means you, you daily using the word walk as a figurative language. You live daily. Live by the ways of God, in the ways of God, for the ways of God, with the ways of God. Living your life considering nothing else than the ways of God. It reminds me of what God said in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that standeth not, that sitteth not, that walketh not. In the ways of the wicked. The seat of this comfort. So the man who walks in the ways of God does not stand in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm -mm. He does not sit on the seat of this scornful to scorn God or to scorn the people of God. No, no, no. So the, 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 the man who fears God walks in the ways of God. And when a man walks in the ways of God, God will delight in him. Amen. Amen. Now, having said this, we've laid the foundation of that psalm. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord and walks in his ways. Now, this man will have five effects on the family. Is now the blessed family. Number one, the man who fears the Lord, who walks in the ways of God consistently and constantly, he will be fruitful in the works of his hand. That's number one. He will be fruitful in the works of his hands. As we are told in Psalm 1, blessed is the man that standeth not, that sitteth not, he shall delight, whose delight is in the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit at his own season and whatever he lays his hand upon shall prosper. That, that, that psalm has always challenged me as I always opened my eyes to see that a godly man, a believer, a man who is a true believer, a committed believer should not be having heartache in prosperity. Because the scripture says it. The scripture cannot be broken. That the man who fears the Lord shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves will not go dry who will bring forth its fruit at its own season. And whatever he lays his hand upon shall prosper. And what is the season? Every opportunity that man has to do good to somebody, goodness will come out of him. People will enjoy him. The, the fruit of that man will bless people as the fruit of a tree blesses people. The honor in a tree is the pleasantness that the consumers of the fruit get from the fruit. That is the honor of the tree. And so when people are blessed by you, when you are a blessing to people, then your fruit is a blessing to them. And they will glorify God. So is this man. He, he, the labor of his hand is fruitful. To what extent? is fruitful to the extent of sufficiency. And now words, the fruit of your labor shall be sufficient for you. That's number one. The fruit of your labor shall bring satisfaction to you. That's number two. Number three, the fruit of your labor will cause you to be prosperous. Three things. Three things. And we see them, we see them in that same Psalm 128. He said, when you eat the fruit of your hands, 
you will be happy. Why? Because it will be sufficient for you. Why? Because you will derive satisfaction from it. Why? And it says it will be well with you. In other words, you will be prosperous. So the fruit of your hand, the fruit of the hand of the man that fears the Lord, we bring sufficiency to him, we bring satisfaction to him, and we bring prosperity to him. May the fruit of your hand bring this fruit to you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the fruit of your hand bring sufficiency for you that you will not have cause to look where you should not look. May the fruit of your hand bring satisfaction to you. May the fruit of your hand make you prosperous in the name of Jesus Christ. Now this is the word of the Lord. And nothing can change it. Even if, if you believe, if you, if, you, if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, it will be there. Waiting for you until you believe. It won't, it won't change. That you don't believe it will not change it. It will only be there waiting for you patiently. The day you believe it, it bounces on you. May it bounce on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see some people who are prosperous this morning. And you are the one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. The man who fears the Lord. Will experience fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. In the body of the wife. The wife shall be fruitful. The labor of his hand shall be fruitful. The wife shall be fruitful. Now this is where I say that. Even though the focus is on the man. Indirectly. The wife is being mentioned. The children are mentioned. The woman is, is fruitful. 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 Giving birth to the number of children they desire. His quiver shall be full of them. Amen. Amen. These are not the days you talk about filling the quiver because of experiences of life. When you think about the price of beans in the market now, you will think twice whether to have more than one or have more than two. Even though your quiver can take ten. I met a young lady who just gave birth to a second baby. The first one was a girl. The second one was a girl. I was joking to her, ah, the third one will be a boy. He said, no, sir. Ah, you, do you want only girls? He said, no. But what now? He said, these two are enough. Even though they are girls, they are enough. I don't want a boy. That tells you the extent to which this thing is biting, biting hard. But for you, you'll be prosperous. For you, you'll be satisfied. For you, you will have sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. So the woman will be fruitful. Now, the children also. The man will also experience his children being fruitful, like olive trees. Olive trees, if you, if you get to an olive plantation, the trees just shoot out. They shoot out. They prosper until they become very tall. And it says, your children shall be like olive trees around your table. Let's talk about fruitfulness. Fru all around fruitfulness. And so the man is fruitful in the works of, of his hand. The man is fruitful in the body of his wife. The man is fruitful in his children. The man is fruitful from his environment. When God has breathed the breath of favor upon you, 
Even your environment, your environment will be fruitful unto you. This is the word of the Lord. Then may you be blessed out of Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. When, when, the, when your environment prospers, you prosper. If Nigeria is prosperous now, we, the, the citizens of Nigeria, we be prosperous. So, he says, the environment of the man that fears the Lord will be fruitful unto, unto him. May your environment be fruitful unto you in the name of Jesus. Never you mind what the situation in the country is now. Never you mind where you find yourself in this country. Whether you are from the big part or you are from the low part. Whether you are from Maitama or Asokoro. Or you are living in one place there. Huh? The scripture says, your environment, your environment shall be fruitful unto you. Wherever you are, your environment shall be fruitful unto you. May you be blessed out of your Zion. May you be blessed out of your Jerusalem. May you see the prosperity of your environment. And let your environment be fruitful unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is a blessed family. And finally, for the sake of time. The man who fears the Lord, who walks in the ways of the Lord. That God depends on. That God has exalted. The psalmist says, he will be fruitful in longevity. He will be fruitful in longevity. He will live a long life. He will live a long life. He will live a long life. Long life is not the quantity of years only. Long life is the, the quantity of years and the quality of the years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, that can be carried over to what we know as eternal life. Eternal life is not just life forever. But life forever, that's quantity, and life in its quality, in abundance, quality. And so the man who fears the Lord, the psalmist says, he shall be fruitful in longevity. He will live long enough to see his children's children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In my place, in my place, in my place, when a woman sees the children and see the children's children and sees the children's children's children, she celebrated. She celebrated. Because she has lived a long life. Not just to see her children and her children's children, but her children's children's children. May you live as long as that. May you live as long as that. May you experience the fruitfulness of longevity. And that is the package of the blessed family. Hinging on the manhood of the family who fears the Lord, who walks in the ways of the Lord. And because he fears the Lord and walks in the ways of the Lord, the Lord will favor him and everything that he has will, will receive a touch of the Lord in fruitfulness. If what we have said is true, what should be your response? How do you want to respond to all we've been saying? I'm writing off now. How do you respond to what we have, we've been saying? That the blessedness of the family hinges on the, the man head. The man head. The man head. And once, if God favors that man head, 
God favors the entire family. If that be the case, I will, I will expect that most of the prayers that are prayed in the family should be centered on the my head. I know a woman who has given testimony that when she came to know the Lord and became mature in the Lord, her prayer point changed. And I, I sat down there and I was listening to what the prayer point changed to. And she said, when I came to understand scripture, she wasn't talking about Psalm 128, scripture. She said, I have come to know that the blessing of God is on the man. Therefore, I've always prayed, God, bless my husband. God, bless my husband. God, bless my husband. Because I know that if God blesses my husband, I will be blessed. That she has taught to pray for herself. That God bless me, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me. That's what she, that's what she said though, I'm telling you. I'm not saying that's what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a testimony of a woman. Are, are you following me? Said, I, I have ceased to pray, God bless me. And I have turned out to God, bless my husband. Bless my husband. And I think that is in line with the psalm that we are considering. So if the woman of the home and women are more prayerful than men, I'm sorry if I'm offending the men, but that is the truth. Women are more prayerful. Come and check the number of men in the prayer meeting this week. You will confirm what I'm saying. Women are more prayerful than men. So if the women spend 90% of the time they spend in prayer, in praying for the man, more will happen. If the woman gathers her children and pray more for the head of the home, that God should make him fear him, that God should make this man walk in the ways of God. If that is the only prayer you will pray with you and your children from for the man constantly, things will be different from what they are now. I assure you that. So your reaction and response so what we have said this morning is that can we spend more time, more time, my sisters, my brethren, can we spend more time to pray for the man, for the man head of the home, that he will fear God, fear God as God wants a man to fear him, and that he will walk in the ways of God. If God answered that prayer, your own is concluded. May it be so in the name of Christ. And next response is for the men. If it is like this, if what we have said now is true, according to Psalm 128, we've not added to it. If it is true, if it is true, that God has positioned me in an exalted position and he sees me there, how should I, as a man, respond? What should be the uttermost thing in my mind? But what? To fear God and to walk in His ways. Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. How do you respond? How do you want to respond? How do you want to respond? Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman. How do you want to respond? Mashallah la bush. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Manto weba. Hmm. Today, today. Today is not Father's Day. No. Today is the family day. But I want to create the indulgence of the men. The men. The men. The man head. To please rise wherever they are. I want to pray specifically for you. You are the arrowhead. On you shines the spotlight. If things go well for you, it goes well for the family.
to please ask the men to please move forward. I'm going to, I'm going to ask the angel of the church to pray for you specifically. Today is not Father's Day. Women, please. But if you follow the message, you will know the direction the message has been going. Can the men please come out here? And I will invite the angel of the church to pray specifically, specifically, specifically for you that you will not fail God. That you will not fail God. That you will be the prophet, the priest, and the king that God has made you. Fear of God will never diminish. Come rain, come sunshine. That the fear of God in you will never, never diminish. And that you will not be tired in walking in the ways of God. Because that is what brings about the blessed family.
Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare we see on all our social media platforms to get real-time updates on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare we see is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wusi. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on create an account and fill in your basic information and get connected. Foursquare Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.